It's something wrong with a system that puts so much emphasis on test scores. You know, that's not the only way you measure learning. But we put so much emphasis on test scores that teachers live in an atmosphere of fear and they, they think if the school students don't improve their test scores, they're gonna lose their job. And, and, and <coughs> who knows? Anybody might cheat a little bit, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't think I would have erased, but who knows what you do when your job and everything is, is, is being threatened. So we, we've got to, I think we're gonna get through it. We're talking about a small percentage. We've got thousands of people who are not involved uh, in it. And uh, I, I, I keep wondering about why there aren't more white folk involved. And a friend of mine told me the other day that white teachers have a little scheme. They, they, you, they, uh, they tell their students, if you don't know the answer to that question, don't put nothing down there. Leave that blank. And we'll take care of it later. <laughs> Black kids put a wrong bargain in this. He'd he, he be an honest. But uh, it's a sad thing, and I think we have to, we've got to hold accountable people who have made serious mistakes, but at the same time, I'm not one of those who wants a pound of flesh. Uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the Merchant of Venice. How many know the story of the Merchant of Venice? Oh, that's good. Most of you don't. Now that you can get, get your Shakespeare back together. <laughs> There's a story called The Merchant of Venice in which uh, a, 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 a merchant, Shylock, uh, charges this guy a pound of flesh for, for a favor, a loan he made. And the guy couldn't pay it, and Shylock came to get the pound of flesh. Incidentally, ladies, a woman lawyer by the name of Portia, uh, gave a speech called The Quality of Mercy is Not Strained. It followed the gentle rain from the heavens. And she saved old, old, old the, the boy's uh, pound of flesh. But uh, I don't think, I think we've got to, each, end of each case where the teachers and principals are concerned has to be judged on its own basis. I don't think we can all put in one thing. And I think we ought not look for the pound of flesh. We ought to be compassionate. And at the same time, people have to be held accountable. Absolutely. And with that said, controversial. A lot of people say you are. Uh, one of the things that uh, came up was when you did ben the benediction for the inauguration. Uh, do you remember word for word that, that uh, benediction when black and have to get back. <laughs> you know, somebody uh, came up with a poem, an old jazz song that I never heard of, so that didn't inspire me. What, what, I, there's a song that they sing in Sunday school about Jesus loves the little children of the world, mm -hmm. red or yellow, black or white, they all precious in his sight. That's what it's, that's where I got it from, red, yellow, black, and white. And I, I, it wasn't that jazz song they talked, I don't remember that one. That was too old for me. CT might remember. But, uh, I remember that one, but but uh, I, I never uh, I never worried about whether it was divisive or not. It, it was the truth. I was calling all people, all God's children, to to rally to 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 enrich the life of people in this nation who've been deprived, and that with a, with a new beginning with Obama that we ought to all strive to do better. And I call on black, white, red, and yellow to, to do better. And not, I would not criticize, I was challenging everybody. And, uh, 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 and then I looked to see who was criticizing me. And it was some fellow named, uh, what's his radio uh, commentator, what was his name? Rush. Yeah, Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> When I decided that he was against me, I knew I was right. <laughs> <laughs> What's one of your favorite, or one of the stories that you know you've told your children, your grandchildren, about uh, those early years, about getting us to this point where we all are today? <clears throat> where you can look out into this room and see so many successful faces. Well, uh, you know, it's, it's always difficult to say, what's your favorite story? Well, I, I, I don't know that I could 
have a favorite, but there, there's so many things that happened that were, I guess the one that I'll never forget is one where uh, three young people were shot in the head in Decatur, Alabama in 1979. When we were going to try to support a young boy named, a young man named Tommy Lee Hines, who was about 16, 17 years old, chronologically, but intellectually, he was, his middle age was eight or seven, something like that. And he couldn't, he couldn't ride a bike because he couldn't get his motor control. He couldn't get his muscles and his mind to coordinate. And they arrested him for rape, raping two white women in Decatur, Alabama. And uh, in so doing, he escaped by driving a car. <laughs> and he couldn't, he, couldn't even, he couldn't even ride a bike. And they finally, they had so much pressure to, to arrest somebody, they arrested Tommy Lee Hine. We, 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 we defended him and we, we had a march. Uh, they arrested him and we had a march in Decatur. And uh, while we were gathering at the church, uh, the reporters came and said, we just picked up on the radio that they're going to kill you. They're going to kill you and John Nettles uh, when you get downtown in Decatur. <laughs> and uh, so we had to decide whether we were going to march or not. We decided that we couldn't leave the people in Decatur defenseless. We couldn't leave them to face the Klan alone. And so we decided to march and we asked everybody to come into church and put their weapons down and the fingernail files and whatever you had. And we had about 250 people to join us and uh, we marched. And uh, uh, sure enough, the Klan was waiting as we reached the downtown Decatur and they shot three or four young people in the head. Fortunately, none of them died. And uh, uh, later on, uh, uh, civil rights organization in, in, Atlanta, in uh, Alabama, uh, what's his name? I can't think of his name. What's it? Black, white guy that got the hair. Uh, CT the oldest time. You can't remember either CT. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> but <clears throat> they, they finally infiltrated the Klan and they arrested and sent to prison mm. uh, the people who shot. And that was when uh, the federal judge in Birmingham gave one of the Klansmen who was convicted a uh, choice of, of attending a workshop that I would lead on race relations or going to jail. And he chose going to jail because he said, coming to a workshop led by me was cruel and unusual punishment. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, that, that's a terrible story that uh, hasn't been publicized as wide. My three, four young black people were shot in the head. The most uh, vicious attack on demonstrators in the history of the movement indicate Alabama in 79 and uh, I'll never forget that but there were so many wonderful stories that that uh, uh, I was in Nassau Bahamas one year on vacation with my wife and somebody uh, yelled out of a passing car and had the car stop and came back and hugged me a young woman I guess she was 25, 20, 30 wow. years old, and my wife was there. I was embarrassed, and uh, <laughs> I told her, don't you hug me like that. Don't shake my hand. <laughs> and uh, uh, but she, well, you rolled your eyes. <laughs> she uh, told me that she had been in a demonstration in Southern Alabama years before, and that's where she was. She was then in school at Harvard, was in Nassau with a workshop, and she was inspired by the demonstration to get involved in the movement, and she was now working on her doctorate at Harvard uh, in black studies. And uh, there's so many stories like that that, that that give me so much comfort 
uh, in my old age that, that uh, I wouldn't take nothing. You asked me the title of my book, which is Singing the Lord's Song in a Strange Land. I wanted to call it, uh, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey. With some dude named, uh, what's that girl <laughs> name in, in North Carolina? What's her name? I can't think of her name. Maya. Yeah, Maya. <laughs> Dr. Dr. Angela. She, she'd already chosen the title, <laughs> and I couldn't get it. But there's so many beautiful stories that have come out of the movement where people have been inspired, their lives have been changed because they let God use them uh, to fight evil and to fight segregation.